Welcome to Geopolitical Horizon. Today I want to examine Russia's economy and its potential. A lot of journalists and analysts in Europe and North America tend to think that Russia's economy is very weak, and I don't think that's the case. I think Russia's economy is very strong, it has a substantial potential going forward, and I'm going to explain why. First of all, we need to look at, Russia, look at Russia's geography. Russia borders 14 countries. Russia's land border is 20,200 kilometers long. Russia's coastal region to the Arctic to the Northern Passage stretches all the way from North America to Northern Europe. So Russia's geography in itself is a very strong economic driver, not only for Russia, but also for other countries, because other countries want to utilize Russia's geography to build export and import corridors and trade corridors with other countries. That's the case for Japan, for China, for European countries that want to connect with Asia. So Russia's geography is a very unique economic driver for Russia going forward. A lot of journalists and analysts tend to forget that. Second of all, Russia is an energy superpower. Russia is exporting enormous amounts of gas, oil to a range of countries across Europe, across Asia. And this is important to bear in mind. Russia has a strong pipeline network stretching from Nord Stream 2 to Belarus, Ukraine, to Central Asian countries, to China. So all these you know, extensive pipelines that Russia has built really is a very important driver for Russia's economy as well. In addition, Russia has a strong LNG potential. It's built Yamal LNG, Arctic LNG 2 in its northern Arctic region, and it's going to build more LNG facilities as well. In addition, Russia is now building an extensive infrastructure network across Russia. It is going to build more highways, railways, ports, airports, and develop fiber optic cable in the northern region. So Russia's infrastructure drive in the next 10 years is going to be extensive. And this is just going to increase Russia's connectivity. For example, the Meridian Highway, it's a 2,000 kilometer long highway stretching from western Kazakhstan across to eastern Belarus that is connecting Russia into the One Belt strategy in China's One Belt, One Road strategy. Second of all, Japan recently started its first block train, which is a MERSC operation from Japan to the UK and utilizes the Trans-Siberian Railway across Russia's expansive geography. This just shows how Japan all now also want to build these transport corridors to Europe by utilizing Russia's geography. Now, Japan and Russia does have border issues and territorial issues in terms of the, the, the Kuril Islands and other issues, but still they are maintaining trade relations and strengthening their economic relations. And this just shows how Asian countries want to connect with Europe and European countries want to connect with Asian countries by utilizing Russia's geography because it's so extensive. This is really important to bear in mind and again, a lot of journalists and analysts tend to forget that. We also need to look at Russia's mineral base. You know, Russia has enormous mineral resources in terms of gold, diamond, and other mineral resources. Agricultural base is very strong. Russia's industrial manufacturing base is substantial. And when countries have such a strong industrial base and a national industrial strategy, which Russia does have, that gives it, in addition, a very much an added you know, edge and a value in its economic potential. So this is something to really think about. Russia's defense sector obviously is very strong. You know, Russia is one of the largest defense exporters worldwide. It has a very unique and strong scientific base in its defense establishment, but also in its, you know, its health establishment, Russia has built now and developed three vaccines against COVID. One, the Sputnik is in the market. The two others are still under development. But this just shows that, you know, Russia's scientific and academic environment and community is really, really strong. So, all these factors in terms of scientific development, in terms of national industrial manufacturing base, in terms of mineral resources, agriculture, energy supplies, geography makes Russia a unique country and has a very strong potential going forward. Now, the sanctions, they have had an impact on Russia's economy. According to IMF in 2019, it had a 0.2% subtractive impact from 2014 to 2018. So yes, it does have an impact. And you know, the environment and the political situation now, also between Russia and Europe and Russia and North America, is also hampering potential. But still, Russia has a very strong potential and Russia is also in many ways looking east. Russia is strengthening its relations with China and with other countries across Central Asia, across, you know, in terms of India. Just look at, you know, the defense potential, defense agreements between Russia and India. Russia is now exporting fighter planes and the S-400 defense missile system to India, as it is doing to Turkey. So, you know, Russia, Russia really has a strong economic uh, plan in terms of its thinking, in terms of connecting with various countries 
you know, in it, not only Europe and North America, it's thinking about, you know, opportunities across Asia, across Africa as well. And Russia also has a, a lot of conferences and exhibitions. You have to look at the SPF, the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum, which is an annual conference in St. Petersburg. It has the Moscow Economic Forum. It has the Valdai Discussion Club. There are various conferences in Sochi every year. In addition, it has its Eastern Economic Forum in Vladivostok. And these conferences and exhibitions you know, opens up for various opportunities where companies attend, foreign companies come in, investors, financial firms. And this just strengthens the really, you know, the economic activity and dynamism in terms of you know, Russia's you know, thinking. So that range of opportunities in Russia, but of course, if there are risks and there are challenges in terms of political risks, there have been protests, you need to think about that. But for companies that want to invest in Russia, really important to do your thorough and proper risk assessments and research, find partners that are reliable, that are trustworthy, that are humble, that have a solid financial industrial track record that you really can really rely on going forward. And of course, having strong Russian linguistic you know, abilities when you operate in Russia is very important as well. So really understanding Russia and making a nuanced and thoughtful assessment of the opportunities in Russia and the risks is very important going forward and not let you know, negative impact or negative perspectives in terms of Russian policies impact how you think. Because I think a lot of journalists and analysts, in particular in Europe and North America, may have various negative impressions of, of Russia or that is, a, you know, that's what I tend to see. And they let that impact their conclusions or their analysis and that just weakens their analysis. So we really need to make thoughtful, carefully nuanced and really thorough assessments of the opportunities and the economic landscape in Russia, which I think is really substantial. And it's just going to be stronger going forward when we see the increased amount of railway connectivity from Asia, from China to Europe because of the one belt, one road strategy. Now, Japan is probably going to increase in even further its economic activity across Russia to strengthen relations with Europe going forward, as are other countries as well. So Russia's economy and its potential is substantial. So do thorough assessments and you may not think about opportunities to connect and see how potentially it's possible to invest. And, and you'll think about long term opportunities as well, because now during the Corona pandemic, when we can't travel, it's a unique time to do proper research, proper planning, build relations with potential partners to see what's possible. So again, thank you so much for joining. I'll forward to see you next week.